All right, so the holiday season is upon us fully, and it's supposed to be the happiest time of the year, right? Then why is it, why is it that Christmas time is the time when people are the most depressed, the most anxious, and the most stressed out other than any other time of the year, this is where it's highest. This is where people are the most depressed. This is where suicide rates go up. This is crazy. This is when people are isolated more than ever. That's wild to me, that it's the happiest time of the year, but it's also the most depressing. It's also the most sad. And this is where people fall away and go through their hardest times is during this season we're in. Jesus came into the world as a lifeline to a hurt, lost, dark world. And he still is a lifeline in your darkest time. Jesus still brings joy to the world. Listen to this scripture in Luke chapter 2. It says this, but the angel reassured them, don't be afraid. He said, I bring you good news that will bring great joy to all the people. The Savior, yes, the Messiah of the Lord has been born today in Bethlehem, the city of David. Let me just tell you, Jesus still brings joy to the world. This is what he does. He brings joy in your depression and despair. Jesus brings joy. He brings joy to the whole world. Jesus is bringing healing to all who are broken and hurting. Jesus still brings salvation to all who are lost and, and hurting and confused. Jesus still brings joy in the midst of pain. That's what he does. That's what he did then. That's what he's doing now. That's what he'll continue to do until he comes back to bring us home. That's what he does. He brings joy. He brings joy. But the more I see, and here's the thing. Here, this, this is what we struggle with. Let, I think I'm a pretty normal person. I think I know where you might be at, too. I'm, I'm thinking about this myself. The more I see happy people being happy together, the lonelier I feel. <laughs> I don't know what it is. I mean, I've lost people personally. I've, I've lost friends, family, loved ones, especially with my background in drugs and addiction. I've got like childhood friends that have overdosed and have been lost. And I know that's, that's true for you too. You've lost people, maybe not the, that part of your testimony, but we've all lost some people. We've, we've lost people. We, we, we feel alone during times and nothing exemplifies that feeling like this time of year. They aren't here anymore. And all I can think about is who I don't have. And that's the, that's the issue. We were thinking about who, what we don't have. Even if you haven't lost someone in your life or have had some kind of loss that is plaguing you right now during the season, uh, there's still the issue of comparison. Come on, somebody. Comparison every single day. I could preach about this every single week because comparison is like, the, is like the virus that infects the whole world right now. Uh, like it or not, we live in a world of comparison, and you may not even realize that it's happening. If you have, I mean, you have friends, but you don't have as many, as much fun as that friend group. You know, I got friends, but they're not as friendly as them. Like, it's, it's this comparison thing. You're, you're getting married, but you didn't have this destination wedding like that couple. You know what I'm saying? Like, you have, that was nothing personal. That was nothing personal. <laughs> we got some leaders getting married. That's, it's, it's funny for me. I don't know. I'm glad you enjoyed that. I liked it. It was a little joke for me. <laughs> you have good kids, you know, but they aren't doing as well as your neighbor's kids down the street. You have a relatively good marriage or relationships, but you don't go on as many dates as that marriage or, or that relationship, that couple over there. You get the point. We see people's highlights, and we compare it to our behind the scenes, our worst days, and we compare people's good times to that. And then maybe you do have some unfortunate circumstances. Like maybe you legitimately do have some things you have to be upset about and, and you get to see everyone around caroling and drinking hot cocoa. Wonderful. I'm so happy for you. Not really. <laughs> Not really because you're supposed to be all, it's the most wonderful time and I don't feel like singing. All right, I'm not feeling it. It doesn't feel good. It's comparison. It's because we're comparing ourselves to someone else that has it just a little bit better. But it's also just wanting what you don't have. And that's an issue that we all face or, or, or what you're missing or what you lost. Um, I have a story. Growing up, um, I, probably the same age again. Like I, uh, today, I'm really focused on that age for me, seven, eight years old. I was around that. I don't remember exactly when, but I had this birthday party. I, I might have told you this story before. I had a birthday party. All my friends were there. It was nice. It was at my house. We, li we lived surrounded by orchards growing up. And uh, so we had this, like, it was this party. And there were some games. And all my friends were there. Well, most of them. Because there was one friend who wasn't there. 
And he lived like across the orchard. I can almost see his house from the orchard. And there, all my friends were inside. And what did little boy Elliot do? Little boy Elliot left his party, walked outside, looked through the orchard and was, Jason, why isn't Jason here? And I was thinking about the one person who didn't. Don't we do that sometimes, though? We got so many good things happening in our lives. We have so many good people that care about us, that love us. We're so blessed. But that one thing is missing. Come on, you do it too. I'm not the only one. I just outed myself in front of you. All right? I just became so vulnerable. And you're like, oh, not me. Not me. I, I, I think it, maybe not the same thing, but a little different. In your marriage, you have a nice date night with your spouse. But you see the other guy get the door for her. And you're like, you don't do that for me. You don't do that for me. How come you never do that? You know what I mean? Come on. You don't, don't raise your hand. Never mind. I'm, I'm going to skip that one. I was going to ask, guys, how many of your girls did that to you? Don't raise your hand right now. This is a church of healing, all right, not destruction. Parenting, you know, your kids are good, but your neighbor kids can do calculus. My kids don't have to worry. I can't even spell calculus. I was trying to type it up. I'm like, calcula. It's, it's not working. It's not working. How about with, with money? With money, every time the neighbors get a new ride, yours looks more like a hoopty. You liked it last week. You liked it. But then they got the, the new Tesla truck, and you're like, my car's so stupid. I don't like it anymore. What's up with that Tesla truck anyway? I got to stay focused. Never mind. Yes, the more we see, the more we see happy people being happy together, the lonelier we can tend to feel. Pretty much everyone in here has lost some people. I know it. I know you got pain. I know you got hurt. We've all had to go through this. Friends, family, loved ones, they aren't here. And I don't know, I can think about is who I don't have. And the answer is, is more simple than you think, and it's a spiritual principle for life. Are you ready for it? I'm going to cut right to the chase right here, right now. Focus up. This is it. Focus on what you have, not what you don't. Oh, wow, my mind is blown. You know, I hope you saw it coming, and I'm going to say that like 10 more times throughout this message because it is so important, and you may know it here, but then forget it here throughout the week. Oh, yeah, I know. I know you're right. I need to focus on what I have, not what I don't. But then you turn around and are discontent. Write that in your notes. Focus on what you have, not what you don't. It begs the question, what do I have? What do we have? There are some things that all of us have, whether you realize it or not. And the best way to get off that emotional roller coaster of loss, loneliness, and sadness is focusing on what you do have. And we have to start there. What do you have? Number one, you have this. You have a purpose to fuel you. Write that in your notes. If you're taking notes, if you're not taking notes, then start taking notes right now. You have a purpose to fuel you. Purpose is one of the most powerful forces that there is in life. It can help us to get through intense suffering and even bring us into a place of incredible satisfaction. The happiest, most fulfilled people I know are people who have a sense of purpose. They know where they're going. They know where they belong. They know, what they're, they know what they're about. And the purpose of all people following Christ can be summed up like this in Philippians chapter 2. Philippians chapter 2, the, the scripture goes like this. Do nothing out of selfish ambition or vain conceit. Rather, in humility, value others above yourself. Not looking to your own interests, but the interests of others. Look to the interests of others. Our self-interest, I got news for you, our self-interest is what we lost, what we're lacking. That is, that is what we tend to focus on, what we lost, how we're feeling left out. In doing that, we exclude the people who are present. That's, that's what happens to us. We're, we're sitting there talking about how lonely we are to people that we're with. It's bizarre that we do this. In other words, you can't look in the rear view mirror and focus on the road ahead at the same time. I mean, unless you're Tomater. You know, I mean, I guess you could do that then. I mean, he got, he got rear view mirrors, you know. And, you know, you, I'm telling you, I'm telling you, you, the front glass, the windshield is big because that's where you're supposed to spend most of your time. The rear view mirror is only this big because you're only supposed to glance in it. Some of us are living our lives out of the rear view mirror. And you're proud of it. You're like, I'm the best backwards driver anywhere. Wee you're like, Wah. backwards in life. And you're backwards driving, man. You take pride in it because you live off of that. And I've been there. I've been there. I've lived off my testimony before. It's like, 
It's, it's less of a testimony, and it's more of like, is where you, have you doing anything else now? I mean, like, are you going anywhere? Are you doing anything different? Best backward drivers, yeehaw. No, we have to look out the window, out the windshield towards others, towards others, towards that purpose that fuels us. It's the path for healing because he who refreshes others will himself be refreshed. It's one of my favorite scriptures in the whole Bible. I want you to focus on what you have, not what you don't have. We need to focus on what we have, not what we don't have. You have a purpose, and that's the people who are present with you. Again, what you have, number two, is this. You have people around you. You could have guessed that one, I bet. But you have people around you. You absolutely do. You absolutely do. It's so tempting to get caught up in what we don't have, then there's people right there with you who need you. Who, who serving them would bring so much contentment into your life. He who refreshes others will himself be refreshed. Serving them, being focused on the people who are right there right now instead of focusing on, oh, well, my other friends, man, they're gone. They moved away or I lost them or whatever. But there's people right here right now that you could be blessing, that you could be serving that will bless your own life. I'm, I'm appealing to what you want. It's not even for them at this point. It's for you. It's going to bless you to do this. It's going to bless you to do this. Proverbs 17, 17. 17, 17 says this. A friend is always loyal, and a brother is born to help in the time of need. Well, that's, that's where you would say, well, that's the problem. I don't feel like I have any friends. Well, you do. They're sitting right around you. They're right here right now. And newsflash, this isn't talking about um, someone being friendly towards you. A lot of people read that scripture and they're like, oh yeah, I need that friend born in time of adversity, born, born to help. You are the friend. It's talking about you. You're the one who's supposed to be the friend. You befriending people. It's not talking about people being friendly toward you. You are the one. You're the brother born to help in the time of need. And you ask, where's the person I need? Well, think about the person that needs you. That's the part you can control. That's the part you can control. And again, this is not in your notes. It's not on the screens. This kind of came to me late. Proverbs 18, 24 says, um, a, a man with friends must be friendly. <laughs> you ever heard that one? Write that in your notes. Write, write that on the side. Proverbs 18, 24. Someone who has a lot of friends must be friendly. Well, I don't have a lot of friends. <laughs> Sorry, it's your fault, man. Be friendly. Get out there. Be a friend to people. Because someone who has a lot of friends is himself friendly. And it's just, you have to focus on what you have around you. I think of COVID, all right? I know that's like a cuss word in church. You're not allowed to talk about it. Not allowed to talk about it. But I think about it sometimes. Um, and for churches, of course, it was a really rough time. We weren't allowed to, you know, be open. And I think we were closed for like six weeks, which was a long time for us. Um, I think I just got us in trouble just now. I'm not sure about that. But either way, it was like this mass exodus that happened. Like everybody got was mad about everything during that season. Y'all remember this, right? It was crazy, man. It was absolutely wild. Um, it was, we were, we were focused on, I was, I'm not we, I, I was focused on what we lost, you know, uh, at, we, and we lost everyone from both sides because we're the kind of people and I'm the kind of person, I, I, there I go to we again, I'm the kind of person who doesn't fall on extremes, you know. I grew up in a very uh, political home where I've got conservative, liberal, and independent family members, immediate family members. So I was just like, nah, I'm good off all, all, all of what y'all are all doing. And I just felt like I didn't fit in in that whole scene. And so because we did uh, one way or the other, Every, only people that were left were moderate like me, <laughs> which was not as many people during that time. But I felt that it was important to our testimony to the community to not be the, the political force either way. And then there was the, the racial divide. There was all that. And because we didn't go extreme one way or extreme the other and get like all hyphy about one thing or the other, and the, the, the bottom line was through all that, we lost everybody with an agenda. We lost everybody with, a, with some thing that they were trying to parade around because we were just laser focused on, boy, does this world need Jesus right this second. And we're just going to focus on Christ, him crucified, and how he still is a lifeline to a lost and hurting world. And, and I was encouraged to focus on, and like my counselors, my pastors, my people, my mentors f encouraged me on this message right here. Focus on what you have. Focus on who is with you. 
because what we gained during that time, even though we lost some numeric things during that time, what we gained was laser focus on purpose and mission and vision. We've never been so clear ever in our 11 years of pastoring. We've never been so clear about where we're going, why we're going there. No matter what happens in the world, we are focused on being a lifeline to our community, and we will stop at nothing to do that. Amen. Somebody. And even though stuff happened, even though it was hard, we, we stayed focused on that thing, that that recentering around vision saved my life and it, it's it's true for the church but it's also true for me that I, I i it was okay if i lost some things in my life as long as i stayed true to that so while we lost some things we gained a whole lot more you can do the same in your own life focus on what you have not what you don't because some of us live our lives like this and i'm about to blow some minds right now this right here this right here is called a focus cap Give me a second. This, this is how it works. Right here. There we go. This is a focus cap, okay? And this is how some of us are living our lives every day, all day. Like, I can see you right now, but if I turn this way, nope. Gone. You gone. I'm over here preaching to a Christmas tree. There is nothing else in the world that, oh, there you are. Oh, I got you. Okay. But we, we live our lives this way, and it's not a good thing. Because we, we don't see the blessings that are all around us because we stay fixated on, oh, this ornament's broken. Oh, I can't. That's all I can see. Did you, can you believe that they even make stuff like this? This is crazy, right? Get on Amazon. You owe it to yourself. I should do the rest of the message like this, right? Okay. No? Is it weird? Okay, I'm going to keep it on then. All right. I already told you I don't care about offending people anymore. I already told you. I, I went through that. I'm over it. I'm over it. I don't even care. I'll wear this hat. This is, this is a good illustration of how not to live your life because you, you, I've got so much blessing right here. There's so many friends and family and, and people that I love and care about right here, but it's like horse blinders. You know, we're, we're, we're fixated and focused on what we don't have. We're fixated and focused on the things that we lost, the things that hurt us, and we get focused in on that, and it's, it's not a good thing. So how do we take it off? Ooh, that's way better. Yes, I'm, I'm glad that's, that's gone. How do we take that off? How do we get that style of living off of us? To get those, to get those blinders off, uh, we would have to see uh, how much relationship is waiting for us once we take those blinders off. How do we get off the blinders? How do we see that kind of blessing? Well, there's a lot of ways, but there's one very practical way for everyone sitting in this church, listening to this message, can do today. It's called growth track. You're like, oh, growth track. I hear about that every week, and now you're going to talk about it again. Yes, I'm going to talk about it again. Let me tell you why. It's because you're, you, many of us, not you, many of us, I don't have any friends I don't, I don't have anybody that is like thinking about, they're right here. They're right here. And we're like, oh, well, I'm too busy. I can't do that. And I'm, I'm not making fun. I, I, re I really am. I understand. There's like, oh, I'm good. It's like I got things going on. But I'm, I'm, I'm letting you know, growth track and getting involved in your church is what I'm really talking. Getting involved, becoming a part of that family changes everything. That we don't do you a service, we don't do ourselves a service by saying, hey, come on Sundays, listen to my jokes and listen to my scriptures and you're good to go. You're not. You're not. That sounds strange to some of us because what am I doing? <laughs> what am I doing? Am I telling people to leave? No, I'm, I'm telling you that, they're, that this is, that's the front door. Once you come into the church and, and begin to get engaged and you're like, you know what, I like it here. I, th I think this works for me. I, I think this, this is going to work out. I, I like this. This is something I can get on board with. Well, I'm letting you know that if you, if you just come on Sundays, that you're, it's like having horse blinders on it that go, oh, this is all there is. This is all there is. And then when something bad happens and, and nobody calls you, you're like, well, they don't like me. We need to have your number. It's like we're, we don't feel like we have the opportunity to do that. Does that make sense? I hope it does. I hope I'm not coming across like, like you're doing something wrong. Uh, you're not. I'm just letting you know that there is something waiting for you that's going to be such a blessing, that's going to be so helpful, not just for you, but also for your family. 
and for, for the rest of your life because this is what it means to be a Christ follower is to belong to a body of Christ. And I have to speak to online too. I have to speak to online because I know that you, you might be watching out of town, out of state. Maybe you just got used to being online. This, this applies to you as well. So everybody's waiting for me to come back, but I'm talking to online for a second. If, if you are in the habit of just watching online, Believe me, I'm glad we have that opportunity. I'm glad that we can be here for you like that. But this does apply to you. I'm encouraging you that there's so much left on the table. There's so much waiting for you to, if you would take that step and come through our growth track and, and, and see how much blessing there is to be a part of a family and focus on what you do have, not what you don't. And if you're out of town, there are a lot of great churches out there. There's so many great churches. Find one in your area. Find one that blesses you right when you walk in the door. Like if you walk into a church, I'm, I'm talking to you online, if you're out of town, if you walk into a church and, and nobody cares to shake your hand, nobody cares to ask you your name, go to another one, all right? I'm just, I'm sorry. <laughs> sorry, not sorry, really. I'm not. Because a church ought to be focused on who you are as a person. As soon as you walk in that door, and there's grace there. Maybe they're busy, whatever. There's grace, of course there is. But they ought to be there for you. Ready to bless you. Focus on what you have, not what you don't. Focus on what you have, not what you don't. There's a great chance that you've been sitting in this family for some time and and not fully engaged with it. Choose to focus on where you are, what God has for you right here and now. Focus on what you have, not what you don't. And there's a community of believers right here that want to bless you. I want to kind of finish today with a, with a bit of a sad story. Um, this is a story about a pastor in Montana named Levi Lusco. He's on the radio. He's a famous guy. But a lot of people don't know this part of his story. And it's to me, it's the most powerful part of his story because he, he tells it like this, that he was walking into the restaurant and they, they call out, let's go, party of six, which to him is a knife in the heart because it's supposed to be a party of seven. It's supposed to be a party. Pastor Levi lost his baby daughter <laughs> and the party will never be the same. See, what happened was they were wrapping presents as a family and his daughter, his youngest daughter, dies of a severe asthma attack while wrapping Christmas presents. Can you believe that? That is like the most terrible thing. This is his real life. This is his real story. And I, I can barely get through the story thinking about it. I have a daughter and it's just, it's just so sad, you know, like that this pastor could lose someone like that in such a traumatic way. She died in her father's arms before the ambulance could even come. And that, that is a sad story and one that he'll never fully shake. And if you've ever been through anything like that, I'm not asking you to, to shake that off or, or, you know, that you would ever truly fully just remove that and be like, oh, I don't need to focus on that. Well, you're going to feel that. And I'm not, I'm not saying you shouldn't. But this is where the story gets interesting. This is where the story, for me, really paints a good picture that at the hospital, like when they followed the ambulance to the hospital, they go to the hospital, they follow her and she's, she dies and they're there and mom and dad are weeping and they're, they're having a terrible time. But it's on the way out, one of the nurses is like talking with them, sharing with them, crying with them and sharing about how she went through something similar to that. And this is where it gets crazy because I just can't imagine doing this, but they, the, the couple, you know, Levi and his wife said, would you want to come to our Christmas service? <laughs> they invited somebody to church in the ho And I'm thinking, you're crazy. How could you be thinking about anybody else during this time? That's wild to me. But that person did come. That nurse did come. That nurse brought their whole family. That nurse got saved. Their whole family got saved. They, they report that like, Hundreds of people ended up getting saved because of that one person. And, and you might be tempted to think like I was, like what kind of insane person invites someone to church when you're in the hospital going through something like that? But I think of it like this, that's how he was coping, was through focused, being focused on purpose, being focused on what I can do. Because if I focus on what I can't do, bring my daughter back, I'm dead. 
I'm dead. I'm dead in the water. I'm no good for anybody anymore ever. But if I focus on what I can do, and that's to be a blessing to others, and that's help others, and that's pray for others, and that's uplift others, and, and be able to do, that blesses, that, I need it. I need to do that because I'll die without it. I'll die on the inside without it because he who refreshes others will himself be refreshed. And in that moment, that pastor has taught thousands of people, me included, and now you, that in our hardest times, if we focus on what we can do and what we do have, it gives life to us that we didn't know was available. Oh, I hope, I hope you can see that. I hope you can see that in these dark times, that, that in the Christmas time where it tends to be a sad time, I hope you can see that this is a path for life, that this is a way that you can get healing, that you can get refreshed. I would never tell you not to feel your pain. I'm not asking you to do that. Of course, you're gonna feel your pain, but I must tell you to not give up hope in the midst of it. Do not give up on your purpose in the midst of it. Because as long as you're still taking breath, here's the last thing, you have a future ahead of you. As long as you're still taking breath, you have a future. I know you've been through some tough times. I know you've been through some hard things. I know you've faced circumstances that people just won't understand, they never will. That's the nature of our lives, is that people can't understand what we went through, I know that. But as long as you're still taking breath, you have a purpose. God has a purpose for you. The scripture goes like this, Philippians 3. No, dear brothers and sisters, I have not yet achieved it, but I focus on this one thing, forgetting the past and looking forward to what lies ahead. I press on to reach the end of the race and receive the heavenly prize, which God, through Christ, is calling us. If you focus on the hurt, you will continue to suffer. But if you focus on Christ and loving others, you will continue to grow. This is where our relationship with Jesus comes in. See, if you have a relationship with Jesus, you always have hope. Even when you have an extremely difficult life, you know what's waiting for you is better than what you have. It protects you from despair. It protects you from being consumed in the, in the hurts or the pleasures of this life. And if you don't have that, if you don't have that confidence that Paul spoke of, that, that heavenly prize, I encourage you with all of my heart, take the gift. Now's your opportunity, take the gift. I wanna pray with you. If you would bow your heads and close your eyes. Father, I just lift up every person listening to the sound of my voice, both in person and online. Lord, that we need your love. We, we need this. We, we need to be reminded to focus on what we have and what we have is an opportunity to live for you, even in the midst of pain, even in the midst of trials, even when things are tough. Lord, we especially in those times, we have you. So I wanna speak to you and pray for, especially, like I mentioned every week, two groups of people. The first group, maybe you used to walk with the Lord. Maybe you have had a great relationship with him in the past, but something happened along the way where you drifted from him. And now you're not as close as you used to be. And you know you're not doing what you should be doing with him. And there's just this gap. There's this gap, you know is present and you're ready to recommit to him here today. This prayer is for you, and I would love for you to be included in this. But also, if you've never had a relationship with him, if you've never fully surrendered your heart to him, I want to encourage you today to do just that. There is a beautiful life living for Christ waiting for you if you would take this step. So if that's you today, all across this room, even online, would you lift your hand up and say, that's me. I want to be included in this prayer. Just lift your hand up right now and say, that's me. I want to be included. Amen. You are seen. Amen. You're seen. Amen. You're seen. Hallelujah. This is wonderful. God sees your heart. He sees who you are. He sees what you need. He cares about you. He loves you. So let's pray this prayer together, if we can, as a whole church. Just repeat it right after me. Say, Father God, I give you my heart. I give you my life. Forgive me of my sin and make me new. Thank you for sending your son, Jesus, to die on a cross for my sin. Fill me with your Holy Spirit. And show me the path that I should take. In Jesus' name, amen.